In this video, we create and deploy an Azure Image Builder template. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. This is the second part of a three-part series on using Azure Image Builder. Please be sure to check out the previous video for an overview of Image Builder and go through the steps to prepare the subscription if you haven't done so already. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Click the bell icon for notifications of new content. And if you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop on udemy.com. There's a link in the description below. Let's recap what we went over in the previous video. We learned that Azure Image Builder starts with an image, adds customizations and software, and then outputs the result to a custom image file. I have a picture from the Microsoft documentation that's often referenced for Image Builder. It shows we start with a source, a Windows or Linux image, a Red Hat iOS, or an existing image. Once the source is defined, we build the customizations. This is what makes Image Builder so useful. This step uses a series of scripts and commands to modify the OS. Image Builder uses PowerShell for Windows and the shell for Linux. Behind the scene, Azure Image Builder uses HashiCorp Packer and is compatible with Packer. Once that's done, the sysprepped image is distributed to a VHD, a managed image, or the shared image gallery. From there, the image is used to deploy VMs. Let's simplify this a bit to show what we'll do in these videos. We start with a Windows 10 multi-user 2004 marketplace image as the source. We're going to add customizations. This video starts small. We use a customization to download and extract AZ copy to the image. There's a couple reasons for starting small. We want to make sure that the template works with minimal configurations before we add a lot of customizations. That makes it easier to troubleshoot if there's a problem. Also, this video is about working with the template. The next video goes deeper into customizations. After the customizations have been applied, Azure Image Builder will output a managed image. We'll create a VM with that image to verify it worked as expected. Before we set this up, let's get a little deeper in what happens during the build process. When we deploy the template to the subscription, a new resource group is created for Image Builder to use during the build process. This has a long name that starts with IT. Image Builder uses the JSON templates to do the actual build. This is a recipe that tells Image Builder how to create the image. There's options to build these templates with PowerShell and the command line interface or edit JSON directly. After spending some time building them in PowerShell, I decided to skip that and edit JSON directly. By the way, if you're not familiar with formatting JSON ARM templates, I did a blog post a while ago that covers the basics of ARM template formatting. I'll leave the link for that below. When we build the image, Image Builder deploys a VM and supporting services in that resource group using the source specified in the template. It applies the customizations and once it's finished, it generalizes the OS and shuts the VM down. From there, it outputs an image based on the template parameters. When the process is finished, the VM and related resources are removed. Something I need to point out, don't delete the resource group Image Builder creates. It's removed by removing the template deployment, which we'll cover in the next video. Coming up, we're gonna start by downloading a template file and then updating the file with our subscription information. Once updated, we'll deploy the template and start the build process. If all goes well, and thanks to editing it will, we'll deploy a VM from the new image and verify AZ copy is on the VM. Let's get started in PowerShell to build the template. Here we are in PowerShell. As stated previously, all these scripts are available on my GitHub page. The link is in the description below. We'll start with the download templates PowerShell file. The original version of the template we're about to use, and most of these commands are from a Microsoft Quick Start template. I provided a link to that at the top of this file. We'll scroll down to the next section. To start, we set up the URL to the template file the deployment will use. This is on my public GitHub repository. After that, we define the template name with the win10 file name variable. I may have over-engineered the next section a bit. I wanted the template file in its own directory, and I wanted to avoid overwriting it if that file already exists. Here, it creates a template directory if that doesn't already exist. After that, it tests to see if the file already exists in that directory. And if it does, it'll ask for a confirmation before it overwrites the file. We'll start by highlighting the block of code. 
and then hit F8 to run. Next, let's open up the template file. Here we have a template directory, and there's our Win10 multi template file. We start with a parameter section. These are passed to the deployment at runtime. Image template name, API version, and location are all included. After that is the variable section, and we don't have any variables in this template. Then we go to resources. Most of this information is hard coded or passed in from parameters. There is a tag section that you can modify if needed. I use an extension in VS Code called Bracket Pair Colorizer to help me keep track of the opening and closing brackets in JSON. It helps a lot with formatting. Let's scroll down to Properties. The build timeout is set to 30 minutes. Builds will stop when that time is reached. This will be fine for our example, but it may be too short if there's a lot of customizations, or for example, if you're downloading a lot of files. You may want to increase the timeout value so that timeout doesn't cause the image build to fail. I increased the size of the VM from the original template. It was set to a standard D1v2. I like to give Windows VMs just a little bit more processing power. Next is the source. This defines where the source image is coming from. The type is platform image. The publisher is Microsoft Windows Desktop. The offer is Windows 10. The SKU is 20H1-EVD, and the version is the latest. Finding this information is not easy. Let's go back to download templates. And at the bottom, I put a list of commands to work through finding the publisher, offer, and SKU. You can use this to locate different sources. The example we're using is a Windows 10 multi image. Change the offer to Office 365 to find marketplace images with O365 installed. Let's go back to the template. Next is the customization section. Here we start by defining a type of customization. This example uses PowerShell. Then we give it a name. PowerShell can use inline execution or a script. This uses inline. It starts by first creating a temp directory in the C drive. Notice the double backslash. Backslashes need that so the template is interpreted properly when deployed. The next line uses invoke web request to download the AZ copy zip file. After that, the zip file is extracted, and the last line copies the azcopy.exe file to the temp directory. Let's move on to the last section, distribute. This defines where the image is output to. In this case, it's going to the same resource group we added the managed identity to. Notice that subscription, resource group name, and region, and some other settings are not defined. We need to update this before we deploy the template. Let's go back to the download templates file. And we'll go to the section that starts with setup variables. Here we have another list of variables. Make sure that the image resource group is the same resource group we set up for the managed identity in the previous video. The rest can be left as is. Let's highlight and run this to add the variables to memory. Once we've added those to memory, we can run the next block of commands. These commands open the template file and update the information that was missing, the items between the less than and greater than signs. Let's run these commands now. Let's go back to the template. Now you can see all the information has been updated, the subscription, the resource group name, the location, the run output name, the image name, and the image builder ID. Now that that's updated, the template is ready to deploy. Let's go back to the download templates file. And we'll scroll down to the next section. Before we deploy, there's two terms that I should mention. Deploying a template creates an Azure image builder definition in Azure, along with a resource group that starts with IT. It doesn't actually create an image, that's done with the build process. We're going to deploy the template first, then build the image from the template. We deploy the template with the new AZ resource group deployment command, passing in the resource group, template file name, API version, image template name, and location. We'll highlight and run this command. 
This will take a couple minutes to finish. Now's a good time to pause and come back once it's done. That command finished. We can verify the deployment was created by running the get az image builder template command. We'll highlight that next and hit F8 to run. It shows the template name and the provisioning state is succeeded. Now, if we go to the portal and go to resource groups, here we have the AIB managed ID RG resource group we created previously. That's where the managed images will end up. But if we scroll down, here we have another one. It starts with IT underscore. This was created by the deployment and it's used by the deployment as it builds images. Don't delete this resource group. The resource group will be removed by removing the deployment. Let's go back to the download template file. The next command starts a build process. This is the actual process of using the source image from the marketplace, going through the customization, and then outputting a managed image. So if we highlight this command and hit F8 to run. This is gonna take a few minutes to finish. I'm gonna pause here and come back once it's finished. That process finished. Let's go back to the portal and see if we have a new managed image. Here we are in the resource groups. I'll go back up to the AIB managed IDRG resource group. There it is, we have our managed image. Now that we have the managed image, let's create a VM and verify our customization worked. If it did, we should see a temp directory with azcopy.exe. We'll go back to VS Code. The next three lines of code first get credentials. These are the credentials we'll use to log into the VM. Then I'll find the artifact ID of the managed image we just created and assign that to a variable. And last, it will create a new VM based on that information. So if we highlight and run these three lines, we'll first enter in a username. And remember, the same rules apply as if you're deploying a VM through the portal. You can't use administrator for the username, and the password has to be 12 digits or longer. And again, this is gonna take a couple minutes, so here is a good spot to pause and come back once it's done. That finished, let's log into the VM next to see if our customizations took effect. We'll go back to the portal, and I'll refresh in the resource group. Here's the virtual machine, so I'll click on that and grab its public IP address. Let's log into that next. Here we are logging into the VM. A newly imaged VM is taking some time at this point with the Windows module installer. My understanding is that settings will be put in place to enable a faster login with Windows 10. If you do run into a long wait at this point, you can just wait it out. It'll be faster on the next reboot, and hopefully this will be taken care of once Image Builder is generally available. We're logged in, and now let's check to see if AZ Copy is there. We'll go to File Explorer. Go to C. There's our temp directory. And there's AZ Copy. There it is. This was successful. We have AZ Copy downloaded and extracted and ready to use. That's how to download and update a template deploy a template, build an image, and then build a VM based on that image. We're gonna use this VM in an upcoming video. You can shut it down though and deallocate it until then. Please join me in the next video where we go over installing software with Image Builder. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.